Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on a discussion on the modes of radio wave propagation. For this video, I'm going to answer some question. Okay, for this video, I'm going to discuss the example question for modes of radio wave propagation. There are five questions for this video. I'm going to explain how can we address the question on the modes of radio wave propagation. This will be the part five series discussion. The early on series discussion on the modes of radio wave propagation, I have put the video link under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more on the different modes of radio wave propagation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's come to the first question. First question is, identify the modes of radio wave propagation that is most likely to occur in HF, high frequency communication, VHF, very high frequency, and also ultra high frequency communication. And last but not least, on the satellite communication. Let's come to the answer for this question. For HF communication, most likely will be a sky wave. Okay, so if you still remember what we have discussed on sky wave, it's basically the radio wave actually aimed at certain angle, propagate all the way towards the sky, and they actually reach the ionospheric, and basically they reflect and come back to the earth again. So this form is mainly used for HF communication, high frequency communication. Next, on a VHF or UHF communication, typically they are higher frequency as compared to HF. So for this mode of propagation, most likely will be space wave. So from here, you can see that space wave is actually called a direct wave plus the ground reflected wave. So which means that this is the direct wave and this is the ground reflected wave. For space wave, most likely is a combination of the direct wave plus the ground reflected wave. Okay, so for this form here, you can see that basically the antenna, they are actually on Earth. So basically, a most part or maybe some part of the wave basically will be reflected from the ground and then reach the destination. So basically, this is what we call a VHF or UHF communication, okay, which mainly consists of space wave, which is a combination of direct wave plus ground reflected wave. Last but not least on satellite communication, for satellite communication, mainly is only direct wave. You can imagine satellite is basically way, way on top of the earth, probably hundred or thousand kilometer on top of the earth. So you can't actually guarantee that the ground reflected wave will be able to reach the satellite communication. So typically for satellite communication, we actually tilt the antenna okay, really up in the sky, point it straight up to the sky and basically the radio wave actually propagate all the way to the satellite. So this is actually known as direct wave which is mainly used for satellite communication. Okay, so this is example one. Example two, okay, what is the maximum theoretical skip distance of a 10 megahertz wave reflected from the F1 layer? Okay, assume the height of the F1 layer is 200 kilometer. So the question asks, what is the skip distance? Okay, so what is the Biggest skip distance, which we are not able to contact, for example, this aircraft here. Okay, so any any point that is in within the skip distance, there is no way the radio wave can actually reach up to them. Okay, so this is the meaning of skip distance. So this question tasks us to calculate what is the skip distance if we are using a frequency of 10 megahertz and the height of the F1 layer is actually 200 kilometer. Okay, let's take a look how can we solve this question. Okay, so to calculate the maximum skip distance, okay, you need to apply this formula. Okay, this 4264.8 is a fixed 
or it's a constant, what you need to do is basically multiply by the square root of the height of the atmospheric. Okay, for example, for this question here, they already mentioned that F1 layer is probably around 200 kilometer above the Earth. So you can punch your calculator, you can realize that this maximum skip distance is 3,745 kilometer, which means that the skip distance is 3,400 3,745 kilometer away. Sorry. Okay, so this is example two. Come to example three. Okay, determine the maximum usage frequency if the critical frequency in a HF communication radio is 6 megahertz and the angle of radiation or the angle of transmission is 15 degree. Okay, so this is a formula which I have introduced earlier on on the discussion on the HF communication. Okay, so I need to calculate what is my maximum usable frequency. So how can I calculate? It's basically, this is the frequency of the critical. Okay, so this is the frequency that ensure that the refraction will take place. I launch it at an angle of 15 degree. Okay, so I punch the calculator. I can compute that the maximum usage frequency, which is 23.2 megahertz. Okay, so this is the maximum frequency that I can use. But remember, we don't typically use at the maximum usage frequency. Okay, we use a number in between the least usage frequency and also the maximum usage frequency. Okay, again, this we will take a look on example four. Example four, in HF radio communication, explain why the operating frequency is normally chosen to be between the LUF and the MUF. How is this operating frequency relate to the MUF and what it is called. For radio wave at the LUF, the least usable frequency, they can be referred back to the Earth at the desired location. Okay, in fact, if you use a lower frequency, the skip distance will be reduced. However, the signal to noise ratio, okay, for LUF, they are typically much lower than higher frequency which means that if you use a lower frequency, okay, your signal-to-noise ratio will be worse off than the higher frequency, which means that higher frequency actually has a better signal-to-noise ratio as compared to the lower frequency because the atmospheric actually absorb more at the lower frequency energy. Okay, so which means that typically, okay, if you still recall what we had discussed earlier on, for lower frequency, they can actually propagate a longer distance. However, for lower frequency, okay, the atmosphere actually absorb more of their power or more of their energy. So because of this, the lower energy actually has a so-called worse off signal to noise ratio as compared to the higher frequency. So therefore, typically, okay, we will not want to use the frequency as low as possible. We want it to use as high as possible. However, when we actually operate at or near the maximum usage frequency, okay, they can result in frequent signal dropout, okay, which means that sometimes we contact the aircraft, sometimes we don't contact the aircraft. So this is the issue when we actually use at or near the MUF. When atmospheric variation alter the length of the transmission path, okay, so this is what you mean, because of the as different absorption, etc. on the refraction, okay, they actually result in a frequent signal dropout. Therefore, the most practical frequency is one that is between LUF and MUF and can avoid the frequency of absorption, but not so high as to result in the effect of rapid change in the atmosphere. And typically, we would like to use the frequency as 0.85 frequency of the maximum usage frequency. Okay, so let's take a look why we have this frequent signal drop out. Okay, take a look on this diagram. Okay, remember, we want to use the frequency as high as possible. Let's say for this part is the maximum usage frequency. We use the highest frequency we can contact the aircraft. But because of some variation okay, on the atmosphere, for example, okay, let's say they actually take a longer distance and reflect back. Then the skip distance is longer and therefore we will not be able to contact this aircraft. Can you visualize this? When we actually, for example, use the maximum usage frequency and because of some variation on the atmospheric, okay, this thing actually refract further away and because of this your skip distance actually increase 
And because of this, there is no way that I can contact this aircraft, for example. And therefore, this is undesired. So therefore, as a guide, we actually want to use 0 0.85 maximum usage frequency. Okay, so this is example four. Okay, let's take a look on example five. Describe briefly how the reflection of a sky wave is affected under the following heading. For example, under this atmosphere density, the frequency of the signal, and also the angle of transmission or the angle of radiation. Okay, let's do on this density of the atmosphere. Okay, the higher the ionization density, the greater will be the reflection. You can take a look over here. Okay, when the density actually change, okay, the reflection path also alter accordingly. In general, the ionization density increase from the D layer to the F2 layer. Beyond that, it decreased again. Okay, so basically, when they actually reach from D all the way to the F2, they basically bend. And beyond that, okay, they basically bend back to the Earth. Okay, so if you are not clear about this, you can always take a look on my HF communication. Okay, therefore, there is less reflection at the D layer than the F2 layer. And this means that the skip distance is lesser at the D layer and longer at the F2 layer. Okay, so this is example 5 to discuss on the atmosphere density. Next, okay, we talk about the frequency of the signal which I have described on example number 4. Okay, but I will just want to put a shorter way to let you understand the frequency of the signal. Lower frequency signal are more easily reflect back as compared to higher frequency. Okay, so you can see from here, okay, the lower frequency, the chances of them to reflect back all the way to the earth is in fact much more easier as compared to the high frequency. However, high frequency radio wave will travel further up into atmosphere and if reflected back, the distance cover will be longer. So if you want to increase your distance, com distance of communication, you actually prefer to use a higher frequency. When you actually use a higher frequency, they will travel deeper into the atmosphere. And then if they able to reflect back, the distance will be longer. If the frequency is sufficient high, the wave will penetrate all layer of the atmospherics and continue up to space. Okay, so this is mainly for satellite communication. If the frequency is so huge, they basically will penetrate through all the layers of atmospheric and basically they will be able to communicate to the satellite. Okay, so this is the part B discussion on the frequency of the signal. Next, part C, okay, we talk about the angle of transmission or angle of radiation. The angle of transmission is important to determine whether a particular frequency will be returned to Earth by reflection from the atmospherics. The least angle from the vertical direction at which a radio wave of a specific frequency can be propagated and still be reflected from the atmospherics is called the critical angle at that particular frequency. Okay, so if you take a look on this diagram here, okay, imagine that I think in my days, okay, we used to play Angry Bird. Okay, I'm not sure whether you still remember this game, which is called Angry Bird. Basically, you project a certain angle to throw, for example, a stone. Okay, you can imagine that the higher, higher, so-called you aim higher, okay, you imagine that you typically can reach a longer distance. And typically, if we want to throw as far as possible, we want to throw something like, maybe like a 45 degree, this kind of uh this kind of angle in order to reach the further distance. Okay, so anything more than that, basically they have a shorter, so-called a shorter distance that we want to throw the stone, for example. So this is what you mean over here. The angle of transmission, which is very crucial. Okay, for example, if you want to propagate very further up, okay, you basically want to tilt it at an angle roughly about 45 degrees, and basically you are able to propagate a longer distance. Okay, if you propagate straight, okay, the, because of the gravity pull, they basically will fall so-called at a shorter distance. So we know that if we want to throw further away, we will project that at a certain angle and basically we throw the ball. So this is what it means. Okay, for each frequency, there is a critical angle. If the signal of this frequency is being at a smaller angle than the critical angle, then reflection will not 
occur. Okay, so this is my five question on the modes of radio wave propagation. So if you need more information on this, again, please look at the description below. Okay, this will explain all the different radio modes of propagation. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much.